given question determine the mass moment of inertia and radius of gyration of the composite body about the centroidal axis at point t we will find out mass moment of inertia of the given composite body about the centroidal axis at point d we will divide this composite body in three parts first is solid block with dimension its a base is 12 width is 8 and height is 10 and two semi circles are identical whose radius is equal to 4 and its a length is equal to 8 to find out mass moment of inertia of this composite body we have to use the parallel axis theorem now we will take the first shape that is the solid block so we will show here the three dimensional diagram and this point d is the center point for this base 12 and for this height 10 now this is known as the centroid and we will show the axis passing through the point d so it is in the form of dash and dot now we have to find out mass moment of inertia about this axis for this solid block so first we will calculate the mass so the mass is not mentioned in the question but the dimensions are given so mass is equal to volume multiplied by density so what is the volume of this block that is equal to this base 12 multiplied by width 8 multiplied by height 10 multiplied by density rho so this is the mass now we will calculate mass moment of inertia of the solid block so we have formula for this solid block mass moment of inertia about the centroidal axis is equal to now if we observe the centroid at point d is on the face of block which is having length 12 and height 10 so we will take value of a is equal to 12 and value of b is equal to 10 then we have formula M1 is the mass of the solid block. So for shape number one, we will write here as a M1. So M1 inside the bracket a square plus b square divided by 12. Now we will put the value. So M1 that means 12 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 10 multiplied by rho multiplied by a square plus b square. That is inside the bracket 12 square plus 10 square divided by 12. so this we have to calculate this term and this is nothing but the mass moment of inertia of the solid block about the centroidal axis d now this part is getting completed for the shape number 1 now what about the shape number 2 and shape number 3 these are the two identical semi circles so we will first calculate mass moment of inertia of the one semi circle about point d so we are going to use parallel axis theorem now if we observe for this semi circle the center is this point a now we will first find out the mass moment of inertia about this point a so i will show the axis passing through this point a so here the length of semi circle is equal to 8 so parallel to this length i will show the line that is in the form of dash we will find out the mass of the semi circular group if we observe its radius is equal to 4 and length is equal to 8 so we have to first find out its a volume so what is the volume of this semi circular group so that is equal to if we take the area of this circle with radius r is equal to 4 and divided by 2 multiplied by this length 8 so how we can write the formula so volume is equal to pi r square that is the area of this whole circle about center a divided by 2 because this is the semi circle and multiplied by its length l so this is the volume multiplied by density rho 
so this is the formula to calculate the volume of the semicircular groove now we will put the value so here is pi multiplied by r that is 4 square divided by 2 multiplied by 8 multiplied by rho so we have calculated this mass and this is for the shape number 2 that means this is the mass m2 now how to find out the mass moment of inertia of this semicircle about this point a so this is the axis passing through the point a if we join two semicircles then it will become the solid cylinder which is having length is equal to 8 and this A will remain its center and we know that this is the axis passing through the center. So how to find out the mass moment of inertia of the solid cylinder passing through its center. So we have formula that is mass of the cylinder multiplied by radius square divided by 2. So mass of the cylinder is equal to 2m2 because m2 is the mass of the semicircle and mass of this cylinder is 2m2. So we will take here mass of the cylinder is equal to 2m2 multiplied by radius square divided by 2. So this is the mass moment of inertia of the cylinder but we want the mass moment of inertia of semicircle so we will divide this whole term by 2. Now we will simplify this. This 2 2 is getting cancelled which is equal to m2 r square by 2. If we observe parallel axis theorem then we have formula ia is equal to ig plus md square. Where m is the mass of that part, d is the distance in between two parallel axes and we have to find out mass moment of inertia about the point g. g is the centroidal axis. So for semicircle also we have to find out ig that is the mass moment of inertia of the axis passing through this point g where g is the centroid of the semicircle. So while using parallel axis theorem we have to find out distance in between A and G because here this is the axis these two axes are parallel which are passing through point A as well as through point G and distance in between them is 4 R by 3 pi. So R is the 4 so if we put the value then distance D is equal to 1.69. Now we will show this in the diagram. So here is the point G. Now if I show the axis passing through point G. Then we have to find out mass moment of inertia about this axis. Now we will apply parallel axis theorem. So we know the mass moment of inertia about point A. So it is IA and this is the calculated value. So IA is equal to IG plus M2 D square where M2 is the mass of the shape 2. So we will put the value. So IA we will put this value is equal to IG plus M2 we have calculated this value multiplied by D square. So D is 4 R by 3 pi it is equal to 1.69 square. So when we calculate this then we will get for semicircle. Ig is equal to 1034.23 rho. So this is the mass moment of inertia for this shape number 2 about the point G. Now we will find out mass moment of inertia of this semicircle about the centroidal axis D. So if we observe when the axis passing through point G as well as the axis passing through point D both are parallel to each other. So we can apply parallel axis theorem. Now how to find out distance in between G and D. So here is the distance. Now if we observe this D is the center point of this base 12. That is this A to D distance is equal to 6. 
and a to g distance is equal to 1.69 that we have calculated earlier. So distance in between g to d is equal to 6 minus 1.69. And that is equal to 4.31. So this is the distance we have to take. Now how to apply parallel axis theorem. So we have two points. G and D. So at point G here is IG. And at point D here is ID. And we have to calculate ID. Now we have to take the formula. ID is equal to IG plus M2D square. Where M2 is the mass of the second part of the semicircle. So we will put the value because IG we have calculated M2 that is 201.06 rho and D is equal to 4.31. So when we put the value then we will get ID is equal to 4769.14 rho. In this question we have to find out radius of gyration for the given composite. So we will first find out what is the mass moment of inertia of the composite as well as what is the mass of given composite. Now if we observe this composite then the mass moment of inertia of this given composite is equal to mass moment of inertia of the solid block about point D minus 2 times of mass moment of inertia for this semicircular groove about point D. So remember we have to take the mass moment of inertia for this solid block as well as for these two semicircles about the same point that is about the point D. So when we calculate this then we will get the answer 9981.72 rho. Now we will calculate mass of this composite. So mass of solid block minus 2 times of mass of this semicircular group. So M1 minus 2 M2. So here is M1 and this is the value of M2. So we will get the answer 557.88. Now radius of gyration K is equal to under root of I by M. Where I is the mass moment of inertia of composite divided by m is the mass of the composite so when we calculate we will get 4.22 unit in centimeter so this unit is given as per the dimensions given so here the dimensions are given in centimeter so we will take the radius of gyration in centimeter